Hi, um, my name is Paya, and I am currently a product designer at H&M Group here in Stockholm, Sweden. Uh, I want to thank uh, the, the, the friends of UXDX to give me this opportunity to share this talk today. And my talk will be about designing for different cultures in Japan and Sweden in particular, and, and learn how our design behaviors to make a better product. Hi again, a little bit about myself. <laughs> I am half Vietnamese, I'm American. Um, my, um, my family is based in both uh, Saigon, Vietnam and San Francisco, US. Um, I have lived in also Singapore and Japan, and I just moved to Stockholm, Sweden last year, October. Hence uh, the hello word in four different languages. Uh, very, I was a very confused kid uh, when I was younger because of my identity. Um, so I did, I did not study design. I was actually a political science student, supposed to go to law school. <laughs> but I started as a graphic designer 10 years ago in Tokyo. And since then, I have worked with several companies, including Raven, uh, Diesel, Mike and Kors, Amazon, Japan, and one of the biggest uh, e-commerce um, C2C, peer-to-peer -peer marketplace uh, in Japan. Um, uh, so most of my experiences are around e-commerce and payment. On a more personal note, uh, I am an ambivert, 60% um, introvert, um, I would say. I love music, I love collecting uh, vinyls, um, and I love nature, mountains, love hiking, and also I love impulsive <laughs> adventure, like the sky uh, diving photo you see here. And I'm really into Buddhist teaching and meditation. Um, let's just start. Uh, here is the photo of Tokyo, Japan. Seven, um, sorry, uh, thirty-seven million residents. Uh, super populated, very dense. A lot of visual noises here, as you can see in the photo. Uh, this is where I worked in Tokyo from the office, um, and not much green. I would say not much white space. And here is Stockholm. Um, different, but also beautiful. Um, this look like we can actually navigate in Stockholm a little better. You know, you see the road and um, you know where to go. Um, and also this is going to bring us to the first insight that I want to share with you. Um, cultural and social aspect of Japan and Sweden. Um, Muji. This is Muji, um, one of their, um, their promotional image. So Muji in Japanese means no brand, unbranded. And um, Muji design philosophy is always about minimal brilliance. And uh, they trying to reduce the, uh, redu um, the production waste. And um, I read a book about Muji back in the days and they actually, their product is um, trying to embrace embrace the emptiness um, concept instead of minimalism. And this connected to um, a Japanese popular concept is called wabi-sabi. It's mean imperfect, uh, imperfection in Japanese. And a lot of uh, these kind of design principles and some of the Japanese design invention in the 60s, such as the Japanese bento box or the Japanese soy sauce bottle, the bullet train, um, they all value functionality and the belief in tangible things that can shape a better design. Um, let's get back to Stockholm for a minute. I want to share with you this experiment uh, from Vosk again. They installed some, um, some fun activities in uh, Alden Plant Station in Stockholm. <laughs> of this experiment is to motivate the citizens to use more 
staircase instead of using the escalator. Um, and uh, I want to talk uh, about the concept of uh, lagom. Lagom in Swedish means not too much, not too little, just right. Um, and also the concept of um, constructivism and functionalism. Um, here you can see from the experiments that uh, Voskagen want to tell us that fun can actually can obviously change the behavior for the better. Um, so in the 1930s, I believe a lot of famous uh, Swedish or Scandinavian design inventions um, it's called the golden age of uh, Scandinavian design, actually. And usually the word, uh, their words is uh, inspired by concept of uh, constructivism and functionalism. And uh, this actually, the, this has shaped the, even the current uh, design um, trend or concept in a lot of uh, these digital products and Scandinavian design. Um, and then we're back in Tokyo again, not much white space. Here's the busy street of Shibuya. A lot of visual noise, um, high contrast and bold color scheme all over the street. Um, if you have been to Tokyo or Japan, you oft, um, we, we often come across these kinds of, uh, of infrastructure details. Um, that has a lot of typographies uh, that takes up negative space. Um, but actually Japanese uh, people or travelers reading these kind of sites, they still can know where to go and which direction to follow. The more you walk and you know, the more relevant information going to be pretend, presented to you. Um, in major transportation hubs or airport, um, the information is usually very clear, color coded, and simplified without overloading a user with too much information. I know the type typography can be a um, you know like uh, can be painful for non-Japanese people to read. However, uh, I I would love to introduce to you the concept of progressive disclosure. According to Interaction Design Foundation, um, pro progressive disclosure is an interaction design pattern that sequences information and actions across several streams. For example, we have like an onboarding stream of showing the users step-by-step uh, -step guidance, how to sign up, how to use the app. Um, the purpose of this interaction is to lower the chances that users will feel overwhelmed by what they encounter. Um, I, it took me uh, a while to understand this concept. Um, and also, um, Japan is a heavily instructed society. Uh, you can see from all the, the <laughs> uh, this actually, uh, this, this actually very fun for me to read on the tongue. Uh, it, it tell me a lot about the area that, um, that I'm at actually. Um, so many um, big design companies in Tokyo or Japan, they, they usually, they, they taking a lot of big like public design projects. Um, one uh, important takeaway from these kinds of observation for me is that Japanese people, they are used to consuming a lot of information without negative space. And they are tolerant with heavy amount of information uh, and visuality as well. Here's a fun example of Stockholm train station. Empty, uh, very appropriate in this climate. Uh, I haven't used the train a lot since I moved here actually. And this is Tokyo. <laughs> a lot of navigational aids uh, here. Um, I can uh, translate this to you. This is, oh, it has some English text too, sorry. This is like where to board for women only car and uh, different kinds of manners that you should follow inside the train. And even the, 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 the floor is like uh, the yellow tiles here in um, different material than the rest of the floor. I believe this is useful for Japanese with uh, or Japanese or anyone with uh, visual impairment or blindness. Um, let's talk about layout and typography. Um, this took me years to learn. <laughs> and uh, here is a Japanese poster for one of the biggest Japanese department store in Tokyo, Hikari-A. Uh, 
I think it's beautiful, but some people can say it can 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 say that oh, not much white space. What is all about? I don't know where or what to read. Um, so uh, the topography in a lot of Asian markets, um, Japan, China, Korea, um, there's a uh, it's it's tricky because ja these kind of characters we don't have a lot of lowercase and uppercase. Italic font is not recommended and no space between different characters. And also Japanese website, which I'm going to show you later, they use like a obnoxious amount of text. <laughs> so it's really important for me to know how to make a good layout and how to use both colors and images in order to group it into one element to differentiate and prioritize content. I still think this is a beautiful poster. And uh, such experience also like uh, it is another example of layout, the typical layouts that we use in Japanese market. Um, here is a poster about how or how not to behave inside Japanese train. Um, the the problematic guys here is has blonde hair, which I'm not a fan of. Uh, I don't know who designed this poster, but uh, it's not appropriate in this. Um, you know, the situation that we're living in uh, today. However, um, so uh, if you want to look for the information or you want how to search on the web, usually people don't know how to if we're not Japanese, but Japanese people, they're going to look for this box here. There's a search bar with the exact keyword that you need to input in order to search for the relevant information. Um, I believe this practice is dated way back into the, the 2000s, where a lot of Asian um, people, uh, consumer, we, uh, when we used the flip phone, the Samsung uh, Motorola flip phone, and uh, this is very similar to the browsers uh, um, back in the days. Um, Yahoo Japan is actually still a popular search engine even now in Japan, so this is some fun fact. And um, now we're back in, in Sweden. This is Spotify. I believe Spotify has a beautiful design language and their design system, I believe, is very well taken care of. So last year, 2000, uh, last year 2020, June, they introduced their, their uh, improved design principles. And one of the principles is unified from the website that everything we design looks and feel Spotify and we aim for co coherence across products. We start by reusing rather than reinventing. Reusing um, is a tricky keyword here. Um, we want our experiences to reuse and adapt for consistency. Nobody should be reinventing the wheel. <laughs> and so um, 2016, 17, uh, when Spotify first arrived in Japan. And this is one of the first poster that I have seen from Spotify in, in Tokyo, Konnichiwa Japan. I think it's beautiful. Like sometimes you don't need to use um, Japanese text to communicate with Japanese users. Um, so I love this design, but however, the website started to have some like weird communication um, designs. Like for example, the text here, um, the text, if you if stands uh, standing alone, it doesn't have any meaning. And there's some incorrect way of um, spacing between special characters here. Um, and there's different kinds of fonts all over the place here, uh, bold font and really thin font. And the text here, I think, I believe in, in several browsers like Internet Explorer or Safari. These texts are going to be almost unreadable. Um, this is uh, a lot for me to talk about, but like when I believe when you localize um, uh, into uh, your product into different markets, it, it, it's important to localize the visual language as well, together with the language itself. And in the eyes of customer in Europe or in this region, Nordic region, uh, some of the Asian designs, like Chinese, Korean design, Japanese design, can be seen as bad and clustered and not pleasing, pleasing on the eyes.
I see this as not a bad design. It's just a design that we have we are not used to and we have the least context of. And I I just like I cannot deny like no one no one can deny that we're still living in the world of heavily Eurocentric design. So um, I think when working with design system, if you're working with a global product, it's important to have a localization guidelines um, for your design as well. Um, and I know it's, 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 it takes a lot of effort, but um, I, I, I assure you it's gonna be so worth it in the end. Contact is everything is uh, another takeaway here. <laughs> um, but however, I still have a great love for Scandinavian design. And one of the, my favorite principle is functionality over form. Um, here's the example of teenage engineering, um, very famous um, beat makers or music uh, uh, products. Uh, and their website is really, really beautiful. Like there's no line to divide between different contents. They just use white space or negative space. And the white space here is to accommodate the functionalities of different components. And um, I still think this, um, this is the perfect example of how to use negative space and like a good rep representation of Scandinavian design. Um, we're getting more on the case studies here. Um, so let's start with um, some of the, the symbols e-commerce customer journey. Um, first, we have Japanese Uniqlo e-commerce website. I worked with them for, uh, for some time, for six months, when I was a freelance consultant. Uh, they have different, many other brands in Japan. But this is very typical for a Japanese e-commerce website. The top half, of the websites usually on navigations, um, quite strange, but let me walk you through the navigations here. Uh, we have the top bar, the headers, universal navigation, whatever you can call it. We have women, men, kids, baby, very straightforward. We have the search bar with some examples of the keyword that you should use. This is actually when you work with Japanese customer. I I I, I believe you you you. Um, this is a good example actually. And under this navigation, we have another navigations. Um, this is more. It has more context to it. We have new new items. This week special, um, limited editions items and discounted items. And we have the campaign um, campaign information and promotional informations here. Um, the, the customer journey here, um, again, this is for a Japanese customer, and they're going to take time to read uh, relevant information, understand the context of how to look for your uh, wanted item, navigate to that category, go to the item detail, and finally add to cart. Um, so customer, uh, the customer journey here makes more sense for Japanese consumer because, again, they are more tolerant to like a heavy amount of information and this has a more holistic approach and this can give the users more context like we have latest information latest uh, items limited edition items um and in contrast um not in contrast but a little little different um here is the action name e-commerce website uh very straightforward navigation so the customer journey here is Again, more simple, look for relevant information, navigate, go to the item detail, and then decide to purchase. And um, it has a more uh, analytical design approach. And they is focusing on the specific needs of different users because they're, you know, like there's all the categories here for you to choose. You don't have to like look for it. You don't have to take time to look for it. Um, in general, European or American customer, they want to use a little amount of time to find what they want. And therefore, the navigation here is a perfect example of how to, to work with uh, this behavior and uh, the demand. Um, and uh, a little bit more specific case study here. Uh, when I work with that marketplace, uh, e-commerce marketplace, product uh, in Tokyo, I was assigned with uh, this task of to redesign the FAQ or the, um, the, the support hub for the customers. 
and uh, the the own design is really uh, I don't know how it, it's not bad again it's just very simple and there's little navigation that you can there's only one navigation uh, here you go to the page and you try to scroll like as long as you you have time to look for the informations and there's no such experience whatsoever so i started the task with laying out on the, the the relevant pages and i tried to divide into different tires here and after understanding about the concept of progressive disclosure and heavy instruction <laughs> for japanese society um, I try not to change the, the structure um, here at all. Um, the, I think the, 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 the biggest improvement, this is the, 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 the redesign, uh, to add the such um, bar here. And I worked with the machine learning engineers in order to give a more, um, you know, a faster um, um, such, ex such experience by um, adding the automatic uh, keywords or the articles that might be relevant to what you want to search. And this got a lot of good feedback. And we we also, uh, there's this uh, reduced uh, amount of customer service workload, which is one of the, the pain points uh, for this, uh, this particular project. And also, uh, we uh, we also took time to take care of the web design as well, which didn't we didn't have this web version before, um, because in um, let's say the countryside Japan or a lot of stay home like moms uh, in Japanese market, some people still use the web about ten percent in this particular product. Um, so yeah, taking care of the web is also a very important, uh, I think, um, customer journeys that um, I that I, I've learned in my years working in Tokyo. Um, the last part is nothing uh, crazy or there's no contrast whatsoever. I believe inclusive design are. Um, my effort in taking care of uh, accessibility and uh, inclusive design hasn't changed um, whichever country that I've, I've moved to. Uh, this is close to my heart because my grandpa, he actually has some disabilities that prevent him from using his finger to navigate the smartphone. Um, some example of some of the Scandinavian web design is uh, to have some functions um, to accommodate uh, some of the disability or some of the visual impairments that our customer might have. Um, this is from H&M uh, e-commerce web. We have this activate high contrast mode. And also um, back in the days, <laughs> actually just a year ago, actually I was involved in a big, uh, big project of user re uh, research and focus group study in suburb Tokyo. And countryside Japan, we ran some uh, some uh, interviews, and we uh, we did some uh, some um, group uh, study uh, with uh, senior users, Japanese users, and this is like I I opening for me in a lot of ways, and I feel like both Japan and Sweden have seen a prominent focus in improving. Um, apps and website for the users of own ages and own economies. Japan is an Asian population, a lot of old people. By 2020, the internet users in Japan above the age 60 had increased by 10%. And also in uh, Sweden and many Western countries, um, we all share a major social challenge, increasing Asian population and how to deal with healthy aging. So I think my effort in this uh, area has strengthened more after moving to Stockholm. In H&M, I was given a lot of opportunities to work with accessibility and also how to communicate and also uh, to communicate more with our developers um, in order to you know, improve accessibility and to include as many customer as we can. Um, and Again, uh, I'm going to talk about a few takeaways from this talk. Um, the ultimate design is a little different from a natural world. This is from my 
favorite Japanese industrial designer, Kenji Ikuan. Um, contact is everything. The design, it can be bad. It's just like can be of a culture that they you are not used to. Um, and empathy here is the tool that will help you understand who is right for your product and who is wrong for it. Um, customer are different, but most of our strategy, either design or product development is always singular. I have worked with in Tokyo in the past eight years, and I often heard people talking about Japanese or Asian designs as bad or to mention too, too much text, too much uh, images, no white space. The truth is we still living in the world and we are gotten used to, um, we have gotten used to the Eurocentric design and also the workflow. Um, and no person else can, in, can interpret, uh, interpret the real customer in the real world. So us, we are designers and we love to use principles or make principles or guidelines and reuse it in different contexts and markets. To be honest, uh, I feel like principles always create more work for us and smart designers should study how these principles um, actually always make it hard to do good design and inclusive design and we should make better ones. Um, so in short, uh, please promise me to unlearn our existing design behaviors and patterns and to listen more to our diverse users. So thank you for your time. There are many different and con um, con controversial ideas in my talk and I would love to hear your thoughts too, either agree or disagree or to teach me more about things I haven't known. So please connect with me here or just give me an email and I hope everyone stays safe and positive.